Hi guys, Crafty Crystal here. What do we have here? This is a J hook. This is an H hook. These are aluminum hooks. And this is a chopstick. Yep. Got caught on vacation one time. Brought my yarn around along. Brought my project along. And I lost my crochet hook. Fortunately, our hotel had a Oriental restaurant in the bait in the in the lobby. I went down there and I got me two chopsticks. Not these two chopsticks, of course. These come from a pack I bought at the store. But went back upstairs, and took my husband's uh, little pocket knife, and made me a set of chopsticks. <laughs> Crochet hooks. This is a. Uh, about equivalent to J. Um, if you want to use dowels, you can get up higher to the bigger ones. In fact, you can get like a one inch dowel and make yourself a cheap jumbo rod. The dowel probably cost you a buck. How much do those jumbo rods cost? Those, those jumbo hooks? Yes, ma'am. Make your own. Okay. Now when I brought these home, I made uh, cuts in them that would fit into plastic tubing, like that. Because I'd always wanted a crow hook set and they cost so much. They, I mean, they come with all kinds of links to do everything you want, but they cost a fortune. This is simple cheap air tubing that you can get anywhere. These you can get free or you can go down and buy a pack at the store. I think I paid a buck ninety five for like a pack of twenty of these. Real cheap crochet hooks. And then all you need is a knife. And we're gonna get started. First you want to take um uh, Now these are flatter than they are long, uh, fat, uh, wider than they are thick, however you want to say it. I think I'm going to make my hook on the widest part in this direction like this. And then I can take and I can trim this down for my fingers. So first you want to make your point. You want to make your nose while your piece is strongest because if you don't you'll be putting too much um, pressure on the neck. You make this little neck here you don't want to be putting a whole bunch of pressure on the end here so snap it there. Okay. I'm going to go ahead So nice hard sticks. I think this knife is getting a little dull. Sorry. I made the other sticks um, I showed you on video. But my hands were out of the uh, camera so often, it really didn't do any good. I'll try to do better this time. I can take and uh, file that down a little bit. I have a nail file. It works beautifully on this wood. Okay, now. You want to have a head that's pretty pointed on both both ways. A little bit more on this one. Okay. 
and I will finish it off with a little sanding. And you're going to need your hook part, you're going to need your neck. <coughs> so, we'll come over on the side and we're going to make a little smile. A little smile. Like that. Across the front. And come back up for a matching smile on this side. Well, you can't really see that, can you? I can't really see that is what I mean. I gotta put my glasses on. Okay. Now this little cut here, I think what I'll do is I'll just make this deeper and do a little make it like a back cut stop cut so I can see it better okay then I'll come up and I'll make my little smile and back cut Make it a little bit bigger smile and back cut. You want to uh, keep uh, deepening your back cut. You do not want your um, cut that you're making towards it to be deeper than the back cut that's there or you'll split your wood. Now, believe me, this was a lot easier in Vegas because they had the um, the lighter, cheaper chop chopsticks. These are going to last a while. These are really heavy duty. This is heavy duty wood. These chopsticks are made to be uh, used and washed and used and washed and used and washed. So this is a lot harder than it would be if you went went on vacation and had one of my experiences. Let's make a little smile on this side and cut up to it. Okay. Come up to this smile, come up to this smile. Oh, got different smiles here, don't I? There we go. You've got a basic idea going here. You don't want to go too fast. It's not going to take that long as it is. You don't need to go too fast. Because you can take wood off, but it's awful hard to get it back on there again. Now, you could make a smaller hook than, say, a J. I uh, wouldn't go much smaller than an H because of the problem of the neck unless you have a good really hard piece of wood. Really need to be careful. Okay. There we go. That cuts nice and deep. I don't have to worry about splitting it anymore. By driving you nuts seeing me do this left-handed. You know, you can go on the um, net and get VLC um, video player. And you go into the uh, tools on the top. Once you open the screen. And you go to video tools. 
And in there you find a place where you can um, change it from left to right or right to left. If you're left-handed, you see a bunch of videos that you like that are right-handed and you really need them to be left-handed. Shoot, it's the only way to go. But you get a lot of uh, right-handed people that just cannot work with a left-handed crocheter. Okay. This isn't going too bad. Hold on a minute. So the whole process is a tiny little bit of back cuts and come up to it. Back cut slide up to it, back cut, slide up to it, getting a like much uh, deeper hook on the side here, back cut, slide up to it, whoops, see what I did there, see what I did there, oh, I couldn't see what I did there, could you? I didn't make my back cut deep enough. I was more worried about what was going on on the camera than I was on what I was doing, and I sliced off a part of my smile. Got my smile on this side. Kind of lost it over here. Let's start again. Back cut. Sneak up to it. Back cut. Up, back cut, up, back cut, there we go, just like that. Kind of sneak up on your neck. You don't want the neck to be, you don't want to try to take too deep a cuts on your neck to start with. Not a good idea. You don't want to snap it off. You don't want to give an excuse to snap it off and make you unhappy. Now, if you wanted to try this for the first time, it would probably just, just to get an idea of how you're going to shape it, it would be an excellent idea. Light is annoying me. It'd be a really excellent idea to go get um, some of the cheap ones. You know, the cheapo uh, the type you get at the throw, uh, throwaway type. Practice on them a little bit. It would be worth it because you would have... Um, get the idea of how you're going to do it and I think those uh, crack and split a lot easier so you learn to be even carefuler with your hook with your knife in making this okay see we're getting there I need a deeper neck so that I can hold my yarn better My kitty cat. What? You did? Okay. Just do me a favor. Don't come up and help me. He is such a helpful kitty. He really is. Comes up and lands right in the middle of what I'm doing. Okay. Last of this back cut here. I think I've got a pretty good neck. Nope. I'm using um, four weight worsted, so need a deeper, deeper uh, throat here. 
just don't want the neck to get too thin. I need a, my hook part deep enough to hold my yarn. There we go. Oh, right down in there. I think I'll get a little bit. It's fun to do stuff like this. Let's see if the hands a little bit. Now, I don't like totally round crochet hooks. I like mine with the flat on them. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to make me a flat front and back right here. Let's see. Out here. So for this one, you just want to go shave a little off the front, going down in, like that. Hmm. Shave a little the other way. I don't have an end on here to hold on to. You don't want to hold the neck. <laughs> you can hear, almost hear how really tough this wood is. Be very careful if you've got a sharp knife when you're coming towards you. It's best if you push your your thumb against the wood and just kind of use this to control where the knife goes. You don't want to go like this, for instance, because if it slips, you're going to slice your hand. But if you're using this action here to move the knife, then you're not going to shove it into your other hand that way. When you're moving away from you, you can use this thumb to help Move the knife along. See? No accidents. And don't hold this down against something like that when you're doing it. You'll snap your wood. You'll have to start over again. Hi, baby. Hello. Must we? Well, that's it for a little bit. I'll be back. Okay, without my kitty's help, I went ahead and uh, sanded my piece down. 
Actually, I used my diamond dib. I love these diamond dib nail files. Found some on found them on Amazon. I haven't seen them in stores for years and years. Anyway, I went ahead and defined my nose. See, I brought my nose down to an almost point here. And sideways, when I sanded it, I went down this way a little bit. So that my nose would be I can do this for you. Now, no, it doesn't show up. But you want your, the slant of my nose goes down this way. See there? Before it was flat. You went dipping down in just a little bit. So when I filed it, I dipped it so it came down in this way a little bit on the end. That also gave me a sharper spot here for when I have to back into a stitch which you sometimes have to do. Have to back into one. See? I crocheted this to see where my uh, any rough spots were left so I could hone this down. If you find a small crack or something uh, there's a trick you can use instead of just saying, okay, all that worked for nothing. Go get another one and start over. Take a little bit of uh, super glue. And uh, the liquid is best, the gel not so good. And let it seep down into the crack. Let's say you have a crack right across here. Let it seep down into the crack. And then set it aside and let it dry all the way. And then come back and sand it. And it'll totally fill in your crack, strengthen your, your piece, and uh, allow you to continue on. Um, with this hardwood, I don't have the trouble I did with the, um, the really cheap ones, the free, first free ones I got. They were a rough enough grain that I kept catching this way, even though I had my trusty diamond dead there to sand it with. And what I did was I used some uh, fingernail polish. I put a thin coat of fingernail polish on it and then went back and sanded it. And it worked perfect, even with the rougher wood. So, now on the other end, where are you guys? On the other end, you just go around with your knife. Knife. Oh, nice. Somewhere, there you are. Somewhere hiding in here is an errant knife. Okay. Come out here. And you just do your stop. And come back to it. Do your stop. Come back to it. Um, this one I left longer because there's something else that you can do. And it's called nooking. And if you don't want to go out and buy a nook set uh, for something that you may decide that you don't like, you could take one of these and turn it into a nook set. Now, the very first time I made these, I decided that on the end I was going to flatten it down a little bit, put a hole in it, put a string on it, and I was thinking I'd be able to slide it off of one hook, you know, slide it off of one hook and slide it onto the other one. That doesn't work. It's very hard to get it back up onto the hook from the string. But I was looking at some um, uh, nooking video and you don't need to slide it back up on the hook. Nooking is very strange to me. But you take and you do your... Uh, load your hook like you do for Tunisian and then you slide it off onto your string and then you turn your hook about back around and you come back and you work on your piece and then you just slide the string out so that would be perfect for this you could make your own nook hook all you gotta do is come down as long as far as you want snap this off
Oh, hard stick. Okay, maybe I won't snap it off that easy. Anyway, um, cut it off and then go down to your end and flatten it out. Deep enough or far enough up that you can put a string in it. And if you watch a, a nooking video, they take and put a, um, they put the string through the hole and you leave a short end and a long end. And once you slide your material off onto your string, you pull the short string out this way. So you can't have them connected together here. And then you turn your hook around and crochet on the, the stitches on your string. And then you pull the long string out. So really all you need here is a hole that you can put a string in. So you can use a drill press, uh, I mean a, a hand drill, anything like that to uh, make your hole. And you'll have a nook hook. And then if you don't like a nook hook, nooking, you have it hasn't cost you anything. You can even go ahead and take the place that you've flattened off and just snap it off. and make a place around it to put another connection like a tube. You do that, you just go around and around and around. Of course now if you don't want to do crow hooking, you don't have to go through this part. You just want to take and um, Round off your end to where you want it. Round it off. Smooth it off. These are very long sticks. Shave it down. Sand it. You'll have a nice end to your thing. What I want to do here, and I really do need my glasses again. That's a little crochet bag I made out of um, Plarn made from the produce bags. You know the clear ones? They really aren't clear when you crochet with them. They turn white. Makes a nice, fine, almost a uh, fabric feeling touch. So you want to back cut and then you want to come down to it. Back cut on that, come down to it. Back cut. You don't need a real sharp edge because you're going to have to sand it down to where you put your um, plastic tubing. I'm not trying to do a really good job here because um, I'm not going to have a connection on this end of this stick anyway and if I did it would be a lot higher up. But that's how you that's how you do it. Any place you need it to stop. You make your cut like that. And then you come down to it. You end up with that. So this is a much smaller screen than I'm used to. 
Okay. So here you have your hook. You can make it into a crow hook or crow net. You can put a flat on this, put a hole in it, and make it into a nooking hook. Got a lot of freedom there. You want to try something out, but you don't want to go buy the equipment to try it? Make your own. Okay. I hope you have, uh, I hope you give this a try. It's kind of fun, especially if you want to make a big, long or big, um, thick hook. Um, you could do, you could probably find somebody that has a piece of wood around that you could mess with. A piece of dowel, a uh, broom handle, mop handle, um, even a one by one. You could take a one by one and just um, keep smoothing down the corners until you have it round and then go from there. Shape your hook. That would be fun, huh? You can make, you can make huge stuff. You can take rope, small rope, and, and um, make some cool stuff with it for the yard or the patio or the boat. Okay. Personally, I don't have a boat. Can't afford a boat. So there you have your homemade crochet hook. So you get your end rounded up like this. And then again, you just take them and uh, file your end so it's smooth. I'm going to leave this one a little bit longer. And I really like to crochet with because I might turn this into a nooking hook. Like I said, nooking sounds really weird to me. And I really wouldn't want to go buy a nooking set. There you have crochet hook. A nice rounded in. Um, I don't like my hooks this long. Uh, if I was going to use this for um, Tunisian, I might leave it this long <clears throat> and put a stop on this end. Anyway, um, if I want to try something that has to do with a different type of hook, I'm certainly not going to go out and spend the money on it and decide I don't like it. Um, I did make a big crochet hook out of my, uh, one of my husband's drumsticks. Um, when you have a drumstick, it has like this little knob on the end. And after a while, sometimes it, it pops off and then he throws the stick away. Well, the stick was that big, nice and big. And I said, shoot, give me the stick. And I turned it into a large crochet hook. And uh, I think I've used it once. <laughs> if I'd gone out and spent $10 on a giant crochet hook, I'd be awful ticked at myself for spending that much money. So anyway, there you are. Take a nice chopstick. Turn it into a crochet hook. Turn it into a crow hook set or make a hole in the back. You take your, you probably only need it about yay big. Cut it off, flatten it out, put your hole in it, put your string on it, and you got a crow uh, a nooking set. Enjoy. It was fun. I got a sore thumb, but it was fun. Bye-bye. <laughs> Happy crafting.